I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus' name, and every believer says a powerful amen. I want to welcome every one of you joining us by way of Kingdom Life Network on Facebook, on you know, YouTube, whatever platform, and all our campuses. We're glad to have all of you joining in the service today. It's 30 days of glory and it's on. We're growing in grace and in knowledge. Thank you for joining us. Let's celebrate our viewers around the world for being a part of this great service today. Glory to God. Somebody excited about Jesus in this house. Well, if they're excited about Jesus, wave your hands and give Jesus a shout and celebrate your victory. Glory! Amen. You can be seated in the heavenly praise God forevermore. Mm -mm. Praise God. Amen. Well, um, like, like it's been all through 30 days of glory, if you've not been around for some days, you may have to get the CDs to catch up with where we are. Uh, and those of you that were not here, and I, 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 almost everybody here, you need to get the CD of the first service this morning because I laid some foundation and I'm just going to build on it. I wouldn't want to go over it again. So you need the CD of the first service to help you catch up with where we are. Second Timothy 3.15, Soteria, season 5. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. And we took time to see that faith in Christ is faith in the blood. Faith in his walk. Faith in Christ is faith in the blood or faith in his walk. Faith in his walk. Read for me Romans chapter 3 verse 22. Romans 3 22. Even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. Now the righteousness is unto all and upon all them that believe. They have to believe for it to be unto them and upon them that believe. Alright read on for me. For there is no difference. Yes. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Yes. Whom God had set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his through blood. Through faith in his blood. God had set him to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. Unto them and upon all them that believe. Very important. Through faith in his blood. The faith has to be in his walk. Not just to say I believe in God. That's lame. Even demons believe. Not to say I believe in Jesus Christ. After all I was with a Muslim in a flight. We were flying to the US. And we were sitting together in business class. And the guy looked at me and he said you are a pastor. I said how do you know? He said because I can tell from the way I see you. You are a man of God. I said okay sure I am. Uh -uh. How did you know? He said, I have about five pastors in my family and I'm a Muslim. I'm a Muslim, but I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Yeah. So that guy believes in Jesus, but does not believe in his works. Does not believe in his sacrificial work. And salvation is only in the sacrificial work of Christ. That you believe that there's somebody called Jesus and you believe that you read about somebody called Jesus doesn't get you saved. What gets you saved is faith in his blood. Faith in his blood is faith in his sacrificial work. Faith in his sacrificial work. Not just saying I believe in Jesus. I believe there is God. Even the devil believes and trembles. That doesn't get you saved. True salvation is in his work. True salvation is in his death, burial, and resurrection. That is where true salvation is found. Salvation is a product of Jesus' work. When you believe in his work, then you are saved because of his work. See, I hear you. You know, that's why brother Paul will keep saying this over and over in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 14. 1 Corinthians 15, 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 14. 
First Corinthians 15, verse number 14. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Your believing is useless if it is not predicated on his resurrection. If your believing is not in his work, in his death, burial, and resurrection. Even if you say, I believe God and tears are coming out of your eyes, it is useless. Your faith is vain. You are yet in your sin. So you are not born again just because you attended a church or came out to an altar call. You are born again because the work of Christ, his sacrificial work, has been understood by you and now you have faith in the fact that he died on your behalf he was buried on your behalf and on the third day he rose again on your behalf faith in that sacrificial work is what gets a man saved give me verse 17 of the same context we are reading verse 17 and if christ be not raised your faith is vain ye are yet in your sins. if christ be not raised your faith is vain empty you are yet in your sin so that you believe in Jesus is not enough. That you believe in God is not enough. That you believe that there is God is not enough. You are still not saved. Salvation is faith in his blood. Faith in his blood. Because the blood was shed for the remission of sins. Are we together here? So faith in his blood. That's very critical. That's the basis for salvation. So, able to make you wise unto salvation through faith. Faith in his blood or faith in his work or faith that is in Christ. Who is Christ? Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the basis for salvation. That's critical. Now, then we move this morning into Jesus being our savior. The word savior is the Greek word sota. It's taken from the Greek word sozo. Sozo is the action. Sota is the actor. So Jesus is the actor of salvation. All right? Jesus provided salvation. So we call him savior. That word savior means it is his function. Savior is the office of Jesus. His present day ministry. His present day ministry as Savior who functionally saves. That is his present day ministry. He is our Savior. And we did exegesis from 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 10 in closing. And I'd like to, to start from there. 1 Timothy 4.10 for therefore we both labor and suffer reproach. Yes. Because we trust in the living God. Yes. Who is the savior of who all men. Who is the savior, the sota of all men. Especially of those that believe. And this morning we took time to say that word specially is not English. That word specially is not the same specially with English specially. The word specially there means specifically, specifically or I am referring the savior of the whole world. I am referring to those who believe in him. That's the word specially there. And we did some exegesis. Get the CD, you will see it. I, I wouldn't want to go through that again. But he's the savior of the whole world, specially, or I'm referring to those who believe in him. Those who believe in him. So, a sota is not just somebody who does it at his own pleasure. Okay? It was used before Jesus came as the office. The office of a king who has the responsibility to protect the territorial integrity of his society. A king, like the president of the Republic of Nigeria. He is supposed to be the sota, the savior of Nigeria. Because as a king, it is the responsibility of the president of or the monarchy of a nation to protect the integrity of that nation from danger, from invaders, from punishment. The word savior was not a coinage of Jesus. 
it was already used before jesus came for kings and princes who had the responsibility of protecting their territory so when we say jesus is savior the reason why the writers of the bible use the word savior for him is to describe the functionality of his office that as a savior who provided salvation it is the sole responsibility of the sota to protect the, 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 the saved from danger from punishment and from invaders it is the job of the sota the commander in chief of the armed forces of nigeria has the responsibility of protecting nigeria nigeria's territory and if he fails in that constitutionally he has failed as a president completely are we together here yeah so it is the job of the president to save the nation if the president cannot save the nation then other measures are taken either within the nation or by the international community to rescue the nation are we here that's why sometimes you will hear America went into Afghanistan or they went into somewhere and went there and brought their soldiers and brought a, you know, the military cantonment into that country to bring peace and order and, and bring that country under subjection and protect it from invaders until they are able to get a, 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 a group of people within the nation who will oversee that nation and protect it. So any nation that fails to protect itself by the chief or the commander in chief has to be salvaged by stronger nations. Are we together here? Yeah. So Jesus being the commander in chief of salvation can brag and say nobody can pluck you out of my hand why he is exercising his office as the commander in chief of salvation nobody nobody no devil no demon he is the sota of sozo and he is the supplier of soteria are you following what i'm teaching here yeah he has the sole responsibility of protecting the territorial integrity of the product he has offered to mankind called salvation. So salvation is to, to deliver you or free you from danger and punishment of sin. If it's clear, can I hear a powerful amen? Now, very important. Very, imp very, very important. Now, uh, I want to get in some. When you read the body of Christ in the Bible, it is not used for the church. In the four gospels, and it's not used at all. The word body of Christ is never used at all in the book of Acts. And it's not used by other apostolic writers. Only brother Paul used the word body of Christ. Peter didn't use that term. James didn't use that term. Jude never used the term body of Christ. The writer of Hebrews never used the term body of Christ. So, only brother Paul used it. That means brother Paul alone will be able to explain what it means by the word body of Christ. But primarily, it is used for function. Function. When he's describing the body and talking about the hand, the leg, he's dealing with functionality. The functioning of members of the body of Christ. I won't have time to get into all of that. But it's important for you to know that, for example, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 to 12. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers yes, for the verse. perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. For the perfecting Christ. of the saints, for the edifying of the body of Christ. The word perfecting is not maturity, even though it, it, mean, it includes maturity. But the word perfecting of the saints is not maturity. Is the word katatismo, katatismo in the Greek. It means to fit parts together to walk. To fit the parts together to walk. That's the meaning of perfecting. To fit the parts together to walk. Referring to the physical body or the body of Christ. Putting every part together in its functionality to walk. So part talks about ministry. Ministry. Every member of the body of Christ has a ministry. 
every member of the body of Christ has a ministry. That is why we perfect you, you do ministry. We perfect every one of you as a saint, saved, sanctified by Christ, to do the work of ministry so that the entire body is edified. Is it clear now? Is it clear now? So when we say body of Christ, we are talking about the functionality or ministry. That's the meaning of the word body of Christ. And it was used only by brother Paul. When you get home, you can read if you want further study. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. Ephesians 2, 16. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. Ephesians 2, 16. Ephesians 4, 15. You can read for me 1 Corinthians 12, 13 just to help a little more with understanding. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Baptized into one body, talking about the body of Christ, talking about ministry. So when we say Jesus is the head of the body, what we are talking about is that Jesus has a ministry to the body. Jesus has a present day ministry to the body of Christ. The sota the head has a ministry to the body of christ remember sota is a function or a functional practice it's not an award sota is not a title just like some people have a title you know they call you chief but you're chief in nothing but people are calling you chief sometimes somebody will look at you and say officer but you're an officer over nothing it's just a title he gave you a personal award it has no functionality are we together here yes now the word sota is not a, an award it's not a title it's an office it's an office like you call me pastor it means i have an office to you where i provide you pastoral service pastor is an office pastor is not a title pastor is an office is a function in the body of christ just like jesus is the head the headship of jesus or the authority of jesus is exercised within his functionality as the sota the savior the savior of the body the savior of the church the savior of his people are we communicating if you understand it, shout a good amen. So, Sota is functional. Jesus rose from the dead and became the Sota of them that believe. He rose from the dead and became the savior of them that believe. Now, Ephesians 5.23. Follow carefully, you will understand. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. He is the savior of the body. He is the sota of the body. Christ is the sota, the savior. Give me verse 25. Ephesians 5, 25. I mean 27. Give me 27 for time. 27. That he might present it to himself a glorious church. It is the job of the sota to present you to himself glorious. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. It is the responsibility of the sota to present you to himself a glorious church without spot or recall next verse next verse so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies he that loveth his wife loveth himself all right so it deals with the fact that jesus is the savior of the body give me verse 30 of the same chapter for we are members of his body of his flesh and of his bones we are members of his body we have ministry to his body all right now so the believer is in the body of christ meaning that jesus is my savior him being my savior means he has an office he has an office i didn't get born again to depend on myself i didn't get born again to depend on myself i didn't get born again to preserve myself i didn't get born again to ensure that i remain born again it's not my responsibility it's 
is the job of the sota is the function of the savior so i put my eternity in his hands and the sota is now in charge yeah remember what he said in john 10 28 john 10 28 and i give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand that is the sota exercising his authority as a savior i give unto them eternal life once they receive my eternal life they shall never perish once they receive my eternal life nobody can pluck them out of my hands are you with me here it's like um, the president of nigeria uh president buhari the day he was sworn in as president of the federal republic of now three years ago or so i was watching everything with keen interest because i'm a nigerian and i want to know what he has to offer my nation and he he began to talk about the insurgency of boko haram and he said we will not sit in abuja and fight boko haram in tembisa is it tembisa sambisa you know those names are like dogs in sambisa okay <laughs> tembisa is a place in south africa i just remember that sambisa tembisa which one now sambisa okay <laughs> All right, so he said, we will not stay in Abuja and fight insurgency in Sambisa. We will deploy the IG of police and some of the military, whatever we have, to Sambisa to confront them. Why? Because it is his job as the commander to protect the territory. It is not my job as a Nigerian to protect myself from foreign invaders. It's not my job. It's a job of the president. And if he can't, he should get out of that place. Let's put somebody who can. It's as easy as that. Are we in the house? It's as easy as that. If you cannot, get out. Let somebody who can, do, because that's the first responsibility of every commander in chief to protect the territory from foreign invaders. It's not my job. That's why he has a security vote that I do not ask for account from him. That security vote is within his power to determine what to do with that money as long as I am protected. But he can't have security vote and I'm protecting myself. Are we in the house here? Yeah. Now, so, that's the job of the sota. Jesus is the sota of salvation. When I received him into my heart, he became the commander in chief of the armed forces for the preservation of my salvation. So now, as the sota, he stood up and he bragged, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, and none shall pluck them. That's a commander speaking. Are we in the house? So I'm not the one keeping myself. He is the one keeping me. Give me the next verse. Verse, verse 29. Verse 29. My father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's Give me mind. 28 in amplified version. And I give them eternal life. And they shall never lose it or perish throughout the ages. They shall never lose it. Meaning I will make everything that is needed to make them not lose it available. They shall never lose it. Or perish throughout the ages. Yes. So all eternity they shall never by any means be destroyed. And no one is able to snatch them out of my hand. No one is able. No one. That person's great grand ancestor has not been born. That can snatch them. It's called eternal security. From the office of the sota. The reason why people are afraid of losing salvation is because they don't understand salvation. How can you lose what you did not acquire? Did you acquire it? You did it. So how can you lose it? You, did, you are not a party to the saving grace. It is the complete work of Christ. And it was offered to you free of charge. And you received it. The moment you received it, he took over. He's in charge now. He's in charge. Are you with me here? That is why 
when the president of the Republic of Nigeria took over office three, four years ago, he is now in charge of Nigeria. So when some people now by agitation say they want to leave Nigeria, did you see what he did? He sent Python to dance. Because it is the job of the, the Sota to ensure that even the people within his constituency remain lawful and abiding to the law of the land. It is the job of the Sota. Python finished dancing, everything calmed down. You don't understand power. Some of you don't understand power. Uh, some of you don't understand power. Some of you don't understand power. If you understand power, you will look at it with a different eye. Power. <laughs> Donald Trump came into power. He's changing everything globally. Changing things. Canceling agreements that held the world together. Changing the laws of business to favor America. He's just messing up things. Moving everywhere and causing wahala for them. And nobody is able to do him anything. It's called power. These are human leaders. We are talking about Jesus. <laughs> he said, when, I, when, I, when you hand over yourself to me, once I take hold of you, it's done. You cannot remove yourself and nobody can remove you. That's why it is called eternal salvation. Not temporal salvation. It's not conditional salvation. Is it in your village, what is eternal? In your village, what is eternal? Eternal is eternal. <laughs> Glory to God. If I'm teaching good, shout I hear you. All right, so let's examine the office of Jesus where he becomes the sota of salvation. Amen. Now in John chapter 1 verse 17, it's the same way it was with Moses. Look at Moses' example. John 1 17, read for me. For the law was given by Moses. The law was given by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So Moses is the lawgiver. Meaning Moses had awesome authority. Moses had awesome authority. He determined whatever happens to the Jewish people. In John 5 45, see Moses in operation. John 5 45. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom you trust. The accuser is Moses, in whom all of you trust. This is Jesus talking. Moses. So he situates the law as Moses. Look at how powerful Moses was. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereon too perfect. It cannot make them perfect but it Moses was in charge. First Corinthians 10 1. Watch this. See how powerful he was. Moreover brethren I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Give me verse 2. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud. They the were sea. baptized unto Moses. That's how powerful the man was. They were baptized unto Moses. Moses was a type of a savior for Israel. He was a type of Jesus. Just like we are baptized into Christ. They were baptized into Moses. Is a type of, 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 of Jesus. Moses is a type of Jesus in the Old Testament. Are we here? I said, are we here? God told Moses, take Israel out of Egypt to the promised land. He did. He brought them out. See Moses is in oppression. When God told him, go and take them out. Did you see the oppression of Moses? Pharaoh, let my people go. Pharaoh said, who are you? <laughs> Moses said, you want to try me? Boom! He threw the rod down. He became a serpent and looked at Pharaoh. Pharaoh said, we can also do the same. 
He called magicians. Power versus power. The magicians came and were throwing their, all of them had snakes everywhere. Moses is on just ha all the snakes ran in. Close his mouth. Moses took it up and said, Dust it. Let my people go. They were baptized into Moses. So you see how powerful a sota is. So you see how powerful a savior is. He said, let them go. The guy was playing games. Water turned to blood. Everywhere was blood. Even the water they were holding in their hand, when they checked, became blood. Moses. Some of you don't know Moses. The guy said, please, please, I will obey. Moses said, okay, water normalized. Water normalized. The guy said, you will not go. Frogs everywhere. People will be moving inside their trousers. Frogs are jumping. They say, oh, please. Moses said, frogs, stop. Frogs, stop. Moses. That's why Jesus said, do not think that I will accuse you. The one accusing you is Moses. The guy has power. What man? In one night, he said, all the firstborns in the land die. The angel of death used this authority and moved through the city and slaughtered all firstborns. In one night, every family cried. All firstborns died in each family. In the whole of the land of Egypt. Pharaoh said, go. When a sota uses his power, nothing can stop him. If nothing could stop Moses from bringing Israel out of Egypt, then you think anything would stop you from being with Christ? I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Am I teaching? If you understand, he shout, I hear you. Are you tired? Can I close? I'm just warming up. Look at Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our consider profession. the apostle and high priest of our profession, the apostle, the apostle. Now, please pay attention. Jesus is your savior or the sota. No pastor is your savior. No pastor is your savior. Jesus is your savior salvation is by jesus now the word apostle the apostle and high priest the word apostle means someone who was sent a sent out apostolos a sent out one jesus the apostle the sent out one now please pay attention jesus is also called the son in hebrews chapter 1 verse 2 he is called the son once apostle once then he is called high priest and sacrifice more often apostle once son once but high priest and the sacrifice more often okay he's called the high priest he is called the sacrifice much more apostle once son once so when he said he was saint and apostle he is more of a verb than a noun the one that is sent that is the high priest he is the apostle tks rule of bible interpretation he is the apostle that is the high priest the apostle sent out is also the high priest okay jesus is the high priest of our profession the word high priest refers to his sacrificial work hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 look at where he is sent out seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens he's passed into the heavens the apostle sent out and this apostle is a high priest he is passed into the heavens. Read on. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. So he is Jesus, the Son of God, sent out. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19 to 20. 
which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. All right, that's our hope. Next verse. Without the forerunner is for us entered. Without the forerunner is for us entered. Even Jesus yes. made an high priest forever after the order made of Melchizedek. Made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now, he is called a forerunner. The word forerunner, the word forerunner is the Greek word prodrosmos. Prodrosmos. That means to go before others for their sake. To go before others for their sake. The forerunner. Or he is a founder for you. Now the word high priest is used 123 times. In New Testament Greek. High priest. Apostle goes. Forerunner goes ahead of us. Apostle is sent out. High priest is used 123 times in New Testament Greek. Is the word Acherios. Acherios. A R C H E A R C H E R E U S. Acherios. Used 123 times. In the four Gospels, it's used 84 times. And none of them refers to Jesus in the four Gospels. In Acts of the Apostles, it's used 22 times. And none of it refers for, to Jesus. 22 times. In the book of Hebrews, is the only epistle where it is used for Jesus in Hebrews. Paul, brother Paul and Peter didn't use the word high priest for Jesus at all. They didn't in their style of writing. All right? But it's in Hebrews because the book of Hebrews is a book of comparison between the Old Testament module and the finished work of Christ. It's a book of comparison. The book of Hebrews. Like I've told you before, the book of Hebrews was written by the writer of Hebrews to the Jews. Trying to persuade the believing and the non-believing Jews to abandon the, the practices and rituals of the law and embrace Christ. So in doing that, there was comparison. He will talk about the shadow. He will talk about the reality. He will talk about the shadow. Then he will show them what that shadow represents in the reality. For example, Hebrews 1 1. God who at sundry times in diverse manners spake to the fathers. So God spake to the fathers of the Old Testament, the Jewish fathers, by the prophets, have in these last days spoken to us in his son. So what the prophets did to the fathers is what the son is doing to us. Comparison. In the second chapter, he talked about angels. All right, and then he talked about Jesus being a son, and that none of the angels can compare with Christ. In the third chapter, he talked about Moses, a servant, and Jesus, a son, and he shows the superiority of Jesus over Moses. The whole book of Hebrews is comparison, so that's why the writer of Hebrews kept using high priest, high priest, high priest, because high priest was known as an Old Testament practice. If it's clear, say, I hear you. All right, so let's get back because I'm going to do a little walk in the book of Hebrews because we're, we're, we're fixing things in this place. All right, now look at the book of Hebrews chapter 5 verse 1. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. All right, high priest offers gifts and sacrifices for sin. Hebrews 7, 27, 28. Who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. Next verse. For the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity, but the word of the oath which was since the law maketh the son who is consecrated forevermore. Maketh the son who is consecrated forevermore. Keep taking note of the word high priest because the word high priest is used 17 times. In the book of Hebrews, primarily for Jesus. Hebrews 8, 3. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore, it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. Hebrews 9, 25. Nor yet that he should offer himself often, as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with blood of others. Alright, so the priesthood of Jesus is the post resurrection life of jesus the priesthood of jesus is the post resurrection life of jesus 
the post-resurrection life. He wasn't called high priest before he died. It's a post-resurrection reality. Nobody called Jesus high priest before he died. So that's why you will not see it in Acts. You won't see it in, in the Gospels because nobody called him. And his death was not called high priest. His death was not called high priest. His burial was not called high priest. His burial was not called high priest. It's only his resurrection that refers to him as high priest. Only his resurrection. Please pay attention. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 4 to 6. Please listen carefully because I'm going to ask you a question after the reading. And no man taketh this hour honor unto himself, but he that is called of God as was Aaron. Yep. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. Yep. As he saith also is another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now, question. Is this rendition, incarnation, or resurrection? Huh? Resurrection. Who else? You all agree it's resurrection? Huh? Okay, how I many of you don't agree it's resurrection? When it, the scripture said, Thou art my beloved son, this day have I begotten thee. Was that incarnation or resurrection? Exactly. That was resurrection. All right? Now, it's important to know that. That was after he rose. He was referred to as this day have I begotten thee. That was when he became high priest. The priesthood of Jesus was upon his resurrection. All right? Please, that's very important. Hebrews 4.14 Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. So the high priest is passed into the heavens. Yeah. Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast our profession. He is passed into the heavens, meaning he became a high priest after he rose from the dead. Resurrection. That's when he became high priest. And he's a priest after the order of Melchizedek, which was a prophecy in Psalm 110 verse 1. Psalm 110 verse 1. Read for me Psalm 110 verse 1. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Read verse 4 for me, verse 4. The Lord hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Brother Paul stayed with verse 1, while the writer of Hebrews stayed with verse 4. So you will see verse 1 repeated by brother Paul in his writings. But you will see verse 4 repeated by the writer of Hebrews. Now let's look at the order of Melchizedek. Hebrews 5.10. Hebrews 5.10. Called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. After the order of Melchizedek. Hebrews 6.20. Whither the forerunner is for us entered. Even Jesus made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Hebrews 7:17. 7, For he testifieth, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. After the order of Melchizedek. Hebrews 7:21. For those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Why does he call him after that order? First of all, what do priests do? Priests offer sacrifices on behalf of others. Priests offer sacrifices on behalf of others. Alright? The word priest is the Greek word herios. H-E-I-R-U I mean R-E-U-S H-E-I R-E-U-S They offer on behalf of others. Use 31 times. Use 31 times. In the four gospels, 11 times. In Acts of the Apostles, 3 times. And none of them refers to Jesus. But in Hebrews, 14 times. Priest. In the book of Revelation, 3 times. Now look at Hebrews 9 verse 6. Hebrews 9 verse 6. 
Now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service. The of priests, the Herios, they went ahead. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 11. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering All of this refers to the Old Testament. Oftentimes, the same sacrifices which can never which take away can sins. Which can never, if your Bible was mine, I will underline never. Which can never take away sins. So the function of the priests was to offer sacrifices. Their function was to offer sacrifices. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 2. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. Which is king of peace. Verse 20. Hebrews 7, 20. And inasmuch as not without an oath, he was made peace. He was made a priest. Hebrews 7, 23. And they truly were many priests, because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. They were not suffered to continue because the Old Testament priests used to die by reason of death. Hebrews 7, 15. And it is yet far more evident, for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest. There ariseth another priest. Hebrews 7, 11. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law. What further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? He was not called after the order of Aaron. He was called after the order of Melchizedek. So the arrival of the priesthood of Jesus buried the priesthood of Aaron. It shut down Levi and closed down the Levitical priesthood and messed up with that order. Why? Because nobody was allowed to be a priest that was not from the family of Levi. Jesus came from the family of Judah. The tribe of Judah. Judah and Levi have nothing in common. Yet, out of Judah, a priest was ordained. Meaning, the law was cancelled. Do you understand? The law holds no water anymore. The Levitical priesthood and all the practices that attended that priesthood collapsed jesus now brought a new priesthood after the order of melchizedek why was it after the order of melchizedek why was it after the order of melchizedek? because melchizedek was a type of the of, of the priest of righteousness and jesus is our righteousness righteousness devoid of works are you following? That's why under the order of, of Melchizedek, Abraham was righteous without works. No works. He just believed. And under Jesus, no works. We just believe because he's a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Because Melchizedek was a type of Jesus in priesthood. Look at that Hebrews 7 verse. Have we read 11? Give me verse 1. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem. Now some people have told you Melchizedek was, a, was not a human being. It's a lie. Melchizedek was a proper human being. He was actually the king of Jerusalem. King of Salem. The word Salem is a short form of Jerusalem. He was a physical king. Melchizedek was a physical king over a community called Jerusalem. Are you with me here? So... Don't let anybody fool you. Melchizedek was just a type. Just like Isaac was a human being. And he was used to demonstrate the sacrificial work of Christ as a type. That's why he, um, God didn't allow Abraham to kill Isaac. Because of what benefit will the death of Isaac be? It's like you're acting a drama. And in the drama you're supposed to die. And then the person that is supposed to kill you did not realize it's a drama. And he loaded the gun fully armed and as he cocked the gun ak-47 instead of the gun to just do boom and nothing comes out they now realize that gun is cocked and it has bullets so the director of the movie say cut 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 bring that gun let us see then they pull out the magazine is full it will have killed the man that is a drama. 
you are not supposed to kill the man you are supposed to act it so all the types were actors acting a script for the reality so that we in the reality if we are looking for some details we can't find we go back to the script and see those real i don't know if i'm talking to some so melchizedek was not jesus he was acting a type isaac was acting a type of us you see isaac was to die in his place a ram died we are like isaac we are supposed to die the ram is a type of jesus in our place jesus died so isaac was just acting he was not the real deal that's why the bible says, in isaac shall your seed be called he didn't say isaac is your seed he said your seed is inside isaac meaning isaac is a typology am i teaching please if you understand he said i hear you it's a type all right so the priesthood of Melchizedek. Go ahead. Verse 1 of Hebrews 7. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. He met Abraham returning from the slaughter of kings and blessed him. So, the office of the priest or high priest was a function. Their function primarily was to offer sacrifice on behalf of the people. To offer sacrifice. They act for others. Priests act for others. To be able to see the imperfection of the law, look at Hebrews chapter 7 verse 3. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the made Son of God. Made like, made like, metaphor. Made like, alright? Unto the Son of God abideth a priest continually next verse now consider how great this man was unto whom even the patriarch abraham gave the tenth of the spoils verse five and verily they that are of the sons of levi who received the office of the priesthood have a commandment to take tithes of their people according to the law that is of their brethren though they come out of the loins of abraham so these guys who are the priests were chosen to offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin then they are to offer for themselves that's their limitation they offer for people but before they offer for you they offer for themselves first because they themselves needed a high priest the old testament priest needed a priest that was their limitation so when they are offering sacrifice to cover the sins of the people they offered for themselves first because they were not sinless then after they have offered for themselves, they now offer for the people. Are we together here? That was the limitation of the priesthood of the Old Testament. And that further shows you that it was just a metaphor or it was just uh, 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 used to, to, to communicate the reality that was to come. They had infirmity. So he doesn't just offer for others. He offers for himself also. Why? Because their office in the Old Testament cannot save. The Old Testament priest could not save anybody. Why? Because he himself needed a high priest. In, in Hebrews 7.21, you will see it clearly stated. Hebrews 7.21. For those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent. They were made without an oath. All right, no oath, but Jesus' priesthood came out of an oath. Number two, they were chosen priests, okay, without oath. Number three, number one, they offered for themselves first before offering for you. That's the limitation. Number two, they were priests without an oath. Number three, Hebrews 7:27. Who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. So every year these people were offering sacrifices because the ones they offered didn't have what it takes to take away sin. Hebrews 9, 7. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the heirs of the people. Which he offered for himself 
and for the errors of the people. So take these points down. Number one, it was an imperfect priesthood. Imperfect. It was an imperfect priesthood, the Old Testament priesthood. Number two, they offered sacrifice for himself first. He offered sacrifice for himself first. Number three, he does it once every year. He does it once every year. Now please notice Moses. Hebrews 9.19. 919. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people. Moses. That guy. So after Moses finished speaking the words of the law, he will now take blood, take water, put together, take wool, touch the water and sprinkle on the people. <laughs> all over the place. But he himself does not sprinkle himself. He never sprinkled himself. But he sprinkled every one of them. Why? He's a boss. He's a sota. What he has told them does not affect him. Only affects them. That's why he, if you read the, the Bible, you will see Moses is a standalone. Beginning at Moses and the prophets. See him powerful. Because he was the servant over his house. Are you with me here? So, what he was simply telling them is that this priesthood does not have any eternal value. I just set it up for you people to help you. But it has no eternal value. That's why he didn't sprinkle the blood on himself. Because he knew that those blood could not take away sin. It was just a ritual done pointing to the original that is coming in Christ. If you're following, say, I hear you. So the Old Testament couldn't give offer something perfect. Alright? Hallelujah. Hebrews 10, 11. Look at the reason why. Moses didn't sprinkle himself. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away Moses sin. Moses knew that those sacrifices could never take away sin. He knew it. But in order to keep the people in the same place and keep communicating the death of Christ to them, he gave them all the rituals to see that if per adventure by any of the ritualistic practice, they may understand salvation. It was Moses' attempt to bring Christ to the people. Praise the Lord. One more thing, Hebrews 4.14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest, that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. We have a high priest that is passed into the heavens. Sin we have. Somebody say very loud with me, I have a high priest that is passed to the heavens. Yeah. Look at Hebrews 7, 26, 27. Please pay attention to the details there. For such an high priest became us. He became us. Who is holy. Holy. Harmless. Harmless. Undefiled. Undefiled. Separate from sinners. He is not a sinner. In Jesus' case, he didn't need to sprinkle himself. Separate from sinners. Read on. And made higher than the heavens. Made higher than the heavens. 27. Who needeth not daily as those high priests. To offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins, and then for the people's. For this he did once, when he offered up himself. To show you the perfection of what Jesus did, he didn't have to be offering sacrifice every year. He just offered once and forever. That's it told it. One job. In the Old Testament, every year, every year. Because of the imperfection of the priesthood, and the imperfection of the system. But this man, this man, my sota, my savior, my salvation. Glory to God. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14. In Jesus' case, he didn't offer animal. He himself was the sacrifice. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself he without He offered support. himself. He is the sacrifice. Without spot to God. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve 
the living God. He offered himself. So this high priest of the New Testament, the high priest is the sacrifice. The high priest is the sacrifice. Hebrews 9, 26, 28. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. Yes. But now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin. By to the put sacrifice. away sin. How? By the sacrifice, by the of, sacrifice himself. of himself. He is the sacrifice and he is the high priest. Perfect. Perfect. He offered himself. Hebrews 10, 10. Somebody say, ah, the book of Hebrews today. We are staying there. Hebrews 10, 10, read for me. By the, which will, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. How many times did he offer his body? Once. Once. He is not just offering something like the Old Testament priest. He offers himself. He is a sacrifice and the high priest. The Old Testament can never take away sin. But Jesus once offered himself. And that once took care of sin forever. Can somebody shout hallelujah? So Jesus is a priest forever. He's not a priest for some time. He's like the son of God. He abides forever. His office is done by him. He's the sealant of his office. In the Old Testament, the priest standard daily to offer. In Jesus' case, he sat down. While the Old Testament priests have to stand because their work never finished, in Jesus' case, he sat down and offered, meaning it is done. He sat down. Old Testament priest stands. Jesus' work, perfect. How can you be under Jesus' work and be afraid of losing salvation? Then you don't understand the work. He sat down. Finished the work. Work akwen. Akwen eternally. Abi? Huh? Eternally. Akwen en sin sin. En sin sin. Akwen. The work of Christ. Eternally finished. Your salvation, eternally finished. Eternal life for you, eternally settled. I've added one vocabulary to my, to my vernacular vocabulary. Eternally settled. This man, we have a God-like man or a man like God. This man, he sat down. Hebrews 1 3. I'm rounding up. Are you blessed this morning or afternoon? Whatever. Hebrews 1 3. Who being the brightness of his glory yes. and the express image of his person yes. and upholding all things by the word of his power yes. when he had by himself purged our sins yes. sat down on the right hand of the mad. After the purging our sin, what did he do? He sat down. When he sat down, what was he saying? The believer's sin is eternally purged. Purged. He sat down. He didn't stand. Once he finished purging, he sat down. Kabata. Hebrews 10 12. But this man. This man. After he has offered one sacrifice. One sacrifice for sins. Forever. Forever. What did he do? Sat down on, Sat the, right down on the right hand of God. Somebody shout glory. Yeah. Hebrews 8, 1. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. Who is set on the right hand. We have a high priest who is sitting down. Hebrews 12, 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand he of the throne of God. He is set down. He said, don't look at the priest that is standing. 
Look at Jesus, the priest who has sat down. Stop wasting your time looking at the priest that is still standing. Mm -mm. Look at Jesus, the high priest who offered himself and has sat down. Finished work. Finished work. The finished work of Christ. Christ has finished it. My job is to enjoy what Christ has provided. Oh, hallelujah. Looking unto Jesus, the author. Glory to God. Hebrews 10, 11, 12, 14. And every priest standeth daily. They stand daily. Ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away which, sin. If your Bible was my own, I will underline that which can never take away. They were offering the sacrifices. Never. It can never take away. Can never take away sins. They gave the sacrifices. They killed the animals. They did everything. Yet you could not take away sin. You know, that's what David understood. David looked at God and said, God, I know I have killed somebody. I know I have killed somebody. And I know that I have collected his wife. I killed the husband. I collected the wife. Not only collected the wife, she's pregnant with my baby. But against thee and thee only have I sinned. That guy is bold. Are you hearing? Are you looking at me? Are you awake? Against thee and thee only have I seen and done this wicked. I know you, you don't want animal sacrifice. If it's animal sacrifice you want, I am the king of Israel. All the animals in Israel I will offer. But I know you have never delighted in animal sacrifice, even though that's a practice. But I have foreseen the New Testament. I've seen the work of Christ in prophecy. And I know that the only sacrifice that pleases you as a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Are you following? And God just forgave him. God not only forgave him, God bragged. I found David, a man after my heart. Is God saying David did right? No. He didn't do right. Of course, there were consequences that he suffered physically. True or false? He suffered a lot of things physically, but with God, everything was fine. It's like a man that goes to steal. And they catch him. And he says, Father, thank you that I am eternally forgiven. My sins, past, present, and future are forgiven, but police are holding his hand. <laughs> then they start beating him. Poor, 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 poor. Is he forgiven? Yes. But police are not forgiven him. Poor. They use gone. Boom. Blood is coming out. Thank you, Father. I'm forgiven. What did you say? Boom. With God, it's done. Eternally forgiven. But with the government of Nigeria, the journey has just started. They throw him inside cell. In far from cell, they put him inside prison. When he entered prison, the prison coordinator told him, bring rent. What did you do? Bring rent. He said, I don't have rent. They gave him another beating. They beat him till he fainted. His sins are forgiven. With God, no wahala. But he didn't steal from God. <laughs> he stole from human being. And the human system won't let him go. They beat that man till he died. He goes to heaven. But he left it very early. No wife, no children, no legacy. Or he left wife, no children. Hanging in the, cut in between. Or he left a wife with two little children. No investment. No nothing. And the wife has not got job. So his wife and children will suffer consequences of his action. But he has gone to heaven. 
very early he went to heaven as a young boy that's why if you read the ten commandments very carefully the ten commandments are summarized in two things love god love your neighbor i'm teaching good oh david was with god it was fixed god forgave him it was over but then he went through some things he went through so much in his life things he shouldn't have gone through because there are consequences for actions on the earth say i hear you yeah there are consequences you can't go free with everything but eternal judgment is taken away by the death of christ if it's clear say i hear you yeah. this man after he has offered how many sacrifices one sacrifice for sins forever what did he do he sat down he has sat down turn to your neighbor and say it's settled eternity for you in christ is settled you have eternal life you have eternal redemption you have eternal inheritance you're complete in christ jesus and on that basis you have authority on the earth i didn't hear your amen are you blessed this afternoon well, if you're blessed, stand on your feet. Turn to your neighbor say, blessed. Say, neighbor, look at me. Look at me very quickly. Say, neighbor, neighbor, look at me. Oh, look at me. Look at me very quickly. You're looking at the most righteous man on the planet. No record of sin. Eternally forgiven. Accepted by God. Blessed. Blessed. Blessed blessed say with me i am in authority over principalities powers demons evil spirits they are under my feet i am in charge i rule over them i have immortality in my mortality i have the abundance of grace which is the gift of righteousness i reign in life i thought i would hear better amen Lift your right hand and I decree and I declare over you as your amen will come like thunder standing on the finished work of Christ whatever does not look like the perfection of Christ around you I command it to expire. Amen. Sickness and disease melt and dissolve in the name of Jesus. I rebuke challenges. I rebuke harassments. I rebuke the voice of the enemy. In the name of Jesus. And I decree for some of you here that have made certain mistakes and you've been going through certain natural repercussions by the finished work of Christ right now, I command the mercy of God to overrule every situation. In the name of Jesus, receive mercy. Receive mercy. Receive mercy. Hey, I say receive mercy. He said, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Look at me for a minute, everybody. Look at me for a minute. I went to the prisons a few, a few, a few, you know, some few years ago. We your prisons to go and preach to the prisoners. Sometimes I just like doing such things. And I walked into the prison just at Barracks Road. And I saw these prisoners, young men, handsome young men, hopeless and helpless. Abandoned at the mercy of nowhere. I walked in there and I began to preach Christ to them. They all gathered because some of them obviously knew me. They all gathered. And they sat down listening. I finished preaching Christ and the love of God to the prisoners. Then I asked them to bow their heads. Let's pray. I pr prayed for them. A number of them got born again. Some of them were weeping. Then I was about to leave. And one of them said to me, excuse me, sir. So I turned. And this prisoner said, sir, I've been in this prison without trial. No court, nothing. And I'm innocent, sir. I said, how are you innocent? He said to me, I used to work for a reverend father. And one day the reverend father's money got lost. And the man said, I was the one that took it. And I know nothing about the money. Before I could say, AB, police picked me. Dumped me in the cell. After a few days, threw me in prison. No trial. I've been here without hope. No plan, nothing. Nobody knows when I will live here. But I heard what you preached today. The man said to me. And he said, I feel contentment in my heart. Even if I die now. I know I'm going to heaven. That's what a prisoner said to me in prison. Whose case had no direction. I called him close. And I called a few of them. They were still hanging around. 
I said, I'm going to pray for all of you. By the next time I come here, all of you will be discharged. I told them, I'm going to invoke mercy. And when mercy comes, it cancels judgment. Kabato lebedea. I stretched my hands over these prisoners. I prayed. Five days after, five days after, the young man came here, 98 Waniba. He said, sir, do you remember me? He was smelling. I said, who are you? He said, I'm the prisoner you prayed for on Monday. What happened? He said, two days ago, somebody came and told me to start preparing. I asked him why. He said, just prepare yourself. You won't be here long. This morning, the guy in charge of prison walked in and said, you, you've been asked to go. You're discharged. Like that. The man came here. When mercy smiles on a man, judgment is cancelled. Some of you have made some decisions that have landed you in trouble. And some of you have taken some steps that have made life unbearable for you. I sense in my spirit to pray for such people in this service. I speak over you today on the finished work of Christ. Every decision, every mistake you have made that have made life unbearable for you. As your amen will come like thunder, receive the mercy of God. 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 In that business, in that career, in that marriage, in that life decision. I say receive the mercy of God. I cancel the hold of judgment. The harassment of the devil. I cancel the harassment of the devil. Every injustice hanging over your life, I command it aborted. 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 About it. Ah, he said, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help. Receive help. Receive help. Gatana, Gatana, Gatana. Gatana, Gatana, Gatana. Lebato Nakata. Some of you have no business struggling. Certain decisions landed you in struggle. Some of you have no business struggling the way you're struggling. By the mercy of God, I speak from the throne of grace. As your amen will come like thunder, mercy cancels judgment. Mercy cancels judgment. Stagnation is cancelled by mercy. Frustration is cancelled by mercy. Frustration is cancelled by mercy. Receive a miracle. Receive a miracle. Receive restoration. Receive a miracle. By the finished work of Christ. Batola Yakato Egreya Nokaya Merika Doreya Meroda Zobara Barako Tenega Ageya 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 As your amen will come like thunder Every devil's harassment is cancelled in your life Receive divine intervention Receive divine intervention Receive divine solution Receive divine direction Receive divine intervention Receive it in the name of Jesus it is done this week i command you to have this testimonies have this testimonies have this testimonies have this testimonies those papers you're waiting for to be signed they are signed right now those checks you're waiting for they are signed right now that job is approved right now that offer is approved right now as your amen is coming like thunder receive supply receive supply I say receive supply in the name of Jesus. It is done. 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 In Jesus' precious name. Can your amen come on a note of final letter? Well, go ahead and celebrate the victory of Christ. Is that how they celebrate in your village? Is that how they celebrate? get excited do something crazy you want to run run you want to somersault somersault you want to scream scream glory glory rejoice rejoice again i say rejoice before you rejoice amen Woo! Get out an offering. Let's give in joy. Let's give with excitement. Let's give in anticipation of what Christ has done manifested.
those of you watching on television on facebook those of you watching in our campuses and those of you watching on television everybody grab an offering we give in this church joyfully and we give in response to what christ has done and we give our resources because we believe that both we and our money we belong to god and there is nothing we have that he didn't give us therefore we do not keep our resources away from god we make our resources available for this good message to reach people all over the world lift it up in the campuses everywhere even on tv and in this building lift up your offerings father we rejoice because of what christ has done and we thank you for the privilege of partaking in the goodness of god through the saving grace of jesus and as we give today we give with excitement and we thank you for the privilege we have in christ and we thank you that both we and our offerings are accepted before you today in jesus precious name and every believer says amen like thunder hit it let's do it as we celebrate glory to god
please take your seat and we want to receive the kingdom investments kingdom investment kingdom investment is that money which out of what money that you have made you set aside you set it aside so that you can bring it to the house so that this gospel which we enjoy would be taken and sent beyond this house to touch lives all over the world that is why we invest and we invest not as of necessity there is no law that compels us to give any particular percentage as kingdom investment but we give out of the love of understanding of the love of God which we have enjoyed that Christ has given to us Paul the apostle says he says but be ye followers of God as dear children and do what walk in love walk in love it is the love of God that provokes us to bring money so that those who have not yet got this gospel could be reached with this gospel everywhere how did Jesus love us the Bible says even as Jesus Christ loved us and had given himself an offering for us a sacrifice unto God Jesus didn't give himself to us he gave himself to God for us and so he said if we have loved you so much Jesus said I've loved you so much you also have to lay down your life for the brethren you don't have any life to lay down but your money can go a long way to bring people to the knowledge of Jesus that is why we give and I want to ask everyone here that is coming here with the kingdom investment everywhere in this house please stand to your feet with your investment stand to your feet kingdom investors every believer is a kingdom investor if you are a believer you must understand you are investor naturally so you have to give all investors please stand to your feet we give in love and we give General, generously we give liberally we give with joy and so all investors wherever you are i would like you to walk to one of the baskets here in front and drop your investment do that with joy do that with with joy in your heart do that in faith oh because everything we do in church we do in faith when we give we give in faith when we give, we give in love. When we give, we give with joy. When we give, we know we are only acting who we are. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. God is not unrighteous to forget your love, to the labor of love. It is, he is not unrighteous. He is mindful. He is mindful. And you have a reward. For every exercise of the labor of love. Hallelujah. So everyone that is here today, I'd like you to put your hand in your pocket and bring out an offering of worship. We give in different, different dimensions. And all these are a function of your understanding. It is when you understand the love of God, you can give and give. Paul said, you give once and again unto my necessity, which is the preaching of the gospel. And so I'd like you to take a very good offering. Let us stand to our feet and worship God with it. Stand to your feet. Bible says Jesus gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God everywhere in the house please do that joyfully and do it that do it promptly do it quickly take your offering and let's stand to our feet and as you do let there be some smiles on your face look at your neighbor say to your neighbor neighbor 
give with a smile. Look at the next person near you and say, neighbor, give with a smile. Look at yet another person and say, neighbor, give with a smile. For God loves a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. Lift those hands and let's thank God for the privilege to give. Just give him thanks. I'd like you to release the offering with a thanks. Thanksgiving. Just give him thanks. 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 Lord, we thank you this afternoon. We thank you for the privilege to give. We give with joy. We give in faith. We give knowing that you are so good to us. We give knowing that you didn't withhold anything from us. Any good thing. You didn't withhold any good thing from us. You gave us Jesus who gave all of who he is and has given us himself. Thank you, Father, because we receive him. And so as we receive Jesus, you receive Jesus as our offering, as an offering for us unto you. Thank you because we have the privilege to stand and we stand in the righteousness of Christ. Thank you for accepting our offerings. In Jesus' mighty name, every believer say amen. of 30 days of glory 2018 and the world is growing every day and knowledge is increasing in Christ Jesus. We want to encourage you to be part of tomorrow till Friday every evening 
at 6 p.m. GMT plus one. Invite friends and loved ones to be part of what God is doing in this place. All our campuses, we live in the able hands of our campus coordinators, and we look forward to having greater times with you this week. But enjoy the rest of your day, everybody, and be blessed. Let's celebrate our viewers around the world for being a part of this great service. Glory.